Friends, this coming Wednesday, we celebrate Ash Wednesday, the solemn beginning of the season of Lent. The Jesuit Institute will broadcast a Mass at 8 a.m. on Ash Wednesday. And we invite you to participate by making sure that you have a small bowl of ashes with you when you join us online. We will use those ashes after the prayer of blessing to sign ourselves as we begin this period of Lent. The ashes are taken from burnt palms of last year's Passion Sunday. However, if you cannot do that, you can use any ash from the burning of leaves or wood or something natural. We look forward to marking the beginning of Lent with you. God bless you. Welcome to St. Ignatius Chapel. Today we celebrate the eighth Sunday of Ordinary Time. Our celebrant today is Jesuit Father Bruce Boiter. name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. We come to the Lord rejoicing and weeping, rejoicing at God's love for us, weeping that we realize we have hurt one another. We have not loved as we should. So we ask the Lord to forgive us and to heal us. Lord God, you sent your Son to teach us how to love and how to serve. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord God, your Son came to bind up our wounds and to forgive our sins. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. He came to gather all the nations, all the peoples of the world, with the peace of your kingdom. Lord, have have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us. May He forgive us our sin and bring us to a new and everlasting life. Amen. Let us now give glory to God. Glory, glory to, to God, God in the highest and, and on earth, earth peace to the people of the world. We praise you. We bless you. We adore you. We glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, and the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. Grant us, O Lord, we pray that the course of our world may be directed by your peaceful rule and that your church may rejoice untroubled in her devotion. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Sirach. When a sieve is shaken, the refuse remains. So a man's filth remains in his thoughts. The kiln tests the potter's vessels. So the test of just men is in tribulation. The fruit discloses the cultivation of a tree. So the expression of a thought discloses the cultivation of a man's mind. Do not praise a man before you hear him speak, for this is the test of men. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. 
It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord. It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord. It is good to give thanks to the Lord, to make music to your name, O Most High, to proclaim your loving mercy in the morning and your truth in the watches of the night. It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord. The just will flourish like the palm tree and grow like a Lebanon cedar. Planted in the house of the Lord, they will flourish in the courts of our God. It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord. They will still bear fruit when they are old, still full of sap, still green, to proclaim that the Lord is upright. In him, my rock, there is no wrong. It is good to give thanks to you, O Lord. A reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, when the perishable puts on the imperishable and the mortal puts on immortality, then shall come to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is your victory? O death, where is your sting? The sting of death is sin. The power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast, immovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that in the Lord your labor is not in vain. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. You will shine as lights in the world, holding fast the word of life. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus told his disciples a parable. Can a blind man lead a blind man? Will they not both fall into a pit? The disciple is not above his teacher, but every woman he is fully taught will be like his teacher. Why do you see the speck that's in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, Brother, let me take out the speck that is in your eye, when you yourself do not see the log that is in your own eye? You hypocrite, first take out the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take out the speck that is in your brother's eye. For no good tree bears bad fruit, nor again does a bad tree bear good fruit, for each tree is known by its own fruit. For figs are not gathered from thorns, nor are grapes picked from a bramble bush. The good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, produces good. The evil man, out of his evil treasure, produces evil. For out of the abundance of the heart, his mouth speaks. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Jesuit author, Mark Link, wrote that criticism destroys both the one who criticizes and the one who is criticized. This idea was not meant to silence the voices of the poor, 
the most vulnerable of people who cry out to God for justice. It's certainly not meant to silence the prophets in our midst who see that not all is right in the world and speak God's truth to power. Rather, this is meant to make us examine the power of our own words to build up or tear down, to bring life or spiritual death to others. This criticism that Father Link was referring to was born of a toxic soul from people who continually focus on the bad side of things, especially people. They are prone to criticize others and to find fault with them. Isn't that why we tend to avoid them at family gatherings? Because every family has one. We avoid them at company socials or even church meetings. They are the kind of people that Jesus is referring to in today's gospel when he tells people to remove the log from their own eye before trying to remove the splinter from their brother or sister's eye. Do you ever wonder why some people are lucky and others aren't? Why some people attract good things into their lives and others do not? One possible reason is that nobody likes being around negative and hostile people when something like job opportunities comes up, we naturally want to have people around us who are positive and affirming. We can be our own worst enemy when the first and maybe the only thing that people notice about us is how we never seem to have a good word to say about anyone else. I've come to realize that our spiritual blindness can cause spiritual deafness in others, just as surely as standing in front of loudspeakers at a music concert can cause physical deafness. When we continually put people down, especially our children or our family members, is it any wonder that they stop believing in their own goodness, their own abilities, their own potential? A symptom of this kind of spiritual deafness is people who find it impossible to accept a compliment. No sooner do they hear something good said about them that they counter it with their own imagined list of flaws and shortcomings. They tend to focus on whatever might have been less than fulsome praise, creating something awful in their minds, even when that may not have been the intent. Our negativity and criticism of others not only destroys them, but ultimately destroys us as well. Our spiritual blindness acts as a slow and corrosive poison, destroying our relationships with family, with friends, and with our co-workers. We know that we are growing in holiness when it isn't so important who's right or who's wrong, or who wins the argument, who is better than the other. We know that we are becoming less toxic and more life-affirming when we realize that the most precious gift that we can give to others is not a reminder of how bad they are, but of how good they are. Ultimately, what makes us and others grow is not a negative and judgmental attitude, but rather an affirming and a loving heart.
we pray now together the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to hell. On the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended to heaven and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Let us now bring our prayers before the Father, confident that he will hear us. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, for his wisdom and right judgment in directing believers in the works of the gospel, we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For leaders of our civic and business communities to remember the needs of the poor and unemployed in their decisions, we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For teachers, learners, and educationalists to begin this year in renewed faith, hope, and resolution, we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For those in need, the homeless, the unemployed, the sick, migrants and refugees, the victims of abuse, those in mourning, we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For each of us, that we may be quick to speak words that affirm and build up others. We pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. For our beloved dead to know the embrace of Christ, the bridegroom of our souls, we pray, Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Almighty Father, we bring these prayers and all of those still into our hearts into your gracious presence this day. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Mother, mingling with this water and wine, we come to share in the divinity of Christ, humbled himself to share in our humanity. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruit of the vine and work of human hands, to become for us our spiritual drink. Lord God, we plead you this gift we offer you with humble and contrite hearts. Lord, wash away my iniquities, cleanse me from my sin. Pray now, brothers and sisters, that these gifts that we bring will be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of His name, for our good and the good of all His holy church. Almighty God, who provide gifts to be offered to your name, and count these offerings as signs of our desire to serve you with devotion, we ask of your mercy 
that what you grant as the source of grace may also help us to attain eternal life with you. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just that we should give you thanks and praise, O God Almighty Father, for all that you do in this world through our Lord Jesus Christ. For though the human race is divided by dissension and discord, yet we know that by testing us, you change our hearts to prepare them for reconciliation. Even more, by your Spirit you move human hearts, that enemies may speak to each other again. Adversaries join hands, and people seek to meet together. By the working of your power it comes about, O Lord, that hatred is overcome by love. Revenge gives way to forgiveness, and discord is changed to mutual respect. Therefore, as we give you ceaseless thanks with the choirs of heaven, we cry out to your majesty on earth, and without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord, Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You therefore, Almighty Father, we bless through Jesus Christ, your Son, who comes in your name. He is the word that brings salvation, the hand you extend to sinners, the way by which your peace is offered to us. When we ourselves had turned away from you on account of our sins, you brought us back to be reconciled, O Lord, so that converted at last to you, we might love one another through your Son, whom for our sake you handed over to death. And now, celebrating the reconciliation Christ has brought us, we entreat you, sanctify these gifts by the outpouring of your Spirit, that they may become the body and the blood of your Son, whose command we fulfill when we celebrate these mysteries. For when he was about to give up his life to set us free, he took bread in his hands, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing. He broke the bread, and he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. This is my body, which shall be given up for you. And that same evening, he took the cup of blessing in his hands, confessing your mercy. And then he gave the cup to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, to be poured out for you and for all, so that sins may be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. Let us now proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Celebrating, therefore, the memorial of the death and resurrection of your Son, who left us this pledge of his love, we offer you what you have given us, the sacrifice of perfect reconciliation. Holy Father, we humbly pray that you will accept us also together with your Son, and in this saving banquet, fill us with his Spirit, the Spirit that takes away everything that separates us from one another. May he make your church a sign of unity and an instrument of peace among all people. May he keep us in communion with Francis our Pope, with Bodhitakhale, our bishop, with all the bishops and your entire people. Just as you've gathered us now at the table of your son, 
So also bring us together with the glorious Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your apostles and martyrs, and with all the saints, and with our brothers and sisters, and those of every race and tongue who have died in your friendship. Bring us to share with them the unending banquet of unity in a new heaven and a new earth, where the fullness of your peace will shine forth in Christ Jesus our Lord. For it is through him, and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, that all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Jesus taught us to call God Father, and so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, and grant us peace in our day. By the help of your mercy, keep us free from sin and safe from all needless anxiety as we wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sin, but on the faith of your church, and grant us the peace and the unity of your kingdom, where you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the Lord, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold the one who takes away the sins of the world. How happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, Lord I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but I only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. Although you cannot receive physical communion with us now, we invite you into a moment of spiritual communion. The great medieval theologian, St. Thomas Aquinas, defines spiritual communion as an ardent desire to receive Jesus in the Holy Sacrament and a loving embrace as though we had already received him. His words are echoed by the great mystic and fellow doctor of the Church, St. Teresa of Avila, who wrote, When you do not receive communion and do not attend Mass, you can make a spiritual communion which is a most beneficial practice. By it, the love of God will be greatly impressed on you. At this moment, we invite you to focus on Christ and your longing for union with Him. Express your desire to feel His grace coursing through you, giving you strength and courage, particularly in these difficult times. In your desiring union, you are united with us and to Christ. In this moment, we experience the reality that is already here.
Let us pray. Nourished by your saving gifts, we pray for your mercy, O Lord, that by the same sacrament with which you feed us in the present age, you may also make us partakers of life eternal. And we ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Mighty God bless you. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Go now in peace to give God glory with your lives. Amen. Amen.